Good morning and welcome to Sigsy Morning Coffee, the show about everything that happened at the Sigsy Technical <laughs> Symposium. From Charlottesville, Virginia, I'm Mark Sheriff. From Kalamazoo, Michigan, I'm Pam Cutter. From Long Beach, California, I'm Alvaro Monge. And from Dayton, Ohio, I'm Larry Merkel. And unable to join us at this exact moment, Judy Sheard from Melbourne, Australia. My goodness. All right, gang. Oh. We made it. We made it all the way to the end. I mean, there's still more stuff today, but... (laughs) There's still a good full day of stuff. I know. Sorry. We'll go to we'll go to the calendar in just in just a minute, but um I'm just curious, what did what did y'all see this week that really got you excited that that really was really awesome? I well, like see see, see go ahead, all the, the conversations going on, you know, and just the chat things going on in the chats and people asking questions and get involved. You know, one of the things that we were really concerned about was how are people going to actually interact? Right. You know, will people get to talk to each other? And I saw a lot of that going on, which, you know, thrilled me to death. Yeah. So, so the level of participation was, was really gratifying. Uh, the opening session still oh. uh, resonates mm-hmm. with me. That was, that was phenomenal as were, you know, all the keynotes. Um, mm-hmm. Some of the technical sessions that I went to were, were every bit as good as I thought they were going to be several on, uh, you know, uh, equity and, and justice and diversity, uh, really powerful messages there. Mm-hmm. Thank you so much to uh, the, 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 um, presenters and the authors of all of, of all of the diversity papers and, and efforts, because I feel like, you know, the theme this year was expanding opportunities. I feel like that the community really stepped forward. And I think we had a good program that, that touched on that theme. So kudos really program good. chairs. It really was a good program I, um, with uh, a, a good amount of, you know, of, of, you know, diversity and equity and social good, mm-hmm. right? So all of these were um, sessions that I attended some of them and um, well-received, really great discussions that people mm-hmm. were having. Mm-hmm. And it was great to have it kicked off um, with the opening session mm-hmm. and the Google panel. So. Mm-hmm. And I'm excited that, that a lot of the stuff was recorded and that we've yeah. got that we can see the author's presentations for quite a while now afterwards because there's so much I missed. Yeah. You know, it's been it's been a busy week and there's so much still that I want to go back and see and do and talk to my colleagues about because I know that they didn't always get a chance to see everything. Um, so I'm I, 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 I'm just thrilled. Yeah, I, yeah, I, I have a lot of vacation saved up. I'm planning on using some of it next week to <laughs> to watch some 60 videos <laughs> uh, there might be some sleeping involved too <laughs> I, I, it's yeah. it's crazy because when we're in person you know i would have the program booklet open and i always i would always struggle like what am i going to go to this session and then i would get analysis paralysis and miss the first part of the session anyway because i'd be at the nsf booth or something and this time I know that I get to go back to all of them and uh, spoiler alert for folks in case you're curious about, you know, what sort of engagement we had. So as of the time of recording this, I'm, I, I go back and look through Pathable. I can see the attendance of all the sessions, all of the paper sessions, even, you know, the 8, 8 p.m. Eastern time sessions, we still had 50 or 60 people in the room, which if you think about when we're in person, that's about what we would have in, in some of the rooms anyway. Um, because everyone's going off doing other things. So, yeah. you know, the, e- even though we stretched it to a week, because, you know, as I, I was joking, I was joking with y'all uh, before the show that, man, this week long 60 thing sounded like a great idea three months ago. And now I'm just like, <laughs> I'm pretty tired. Um, but it's obvious that people are coming to the stuff, even at the late, at the end of the week. And, and these sessions are still being attended. And gosh, that makes me so, so happy. I mean, yeah, we have, I'm, I'm- I'm glad you mentioned that because I've been thinking of, you know, the attendance numbers of like 50 in a session and comparing them to the number of people who are registered for the symposium. But you're right. Uh, if I think about it in comparison to the number of people who would have attended the session in person, those are good numbers. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. yeah. And it was easy to also switch between sessions because I did that quite a mm-hmm. few times where I was right. in you know, I was interested in one paper in one session, and then I was interested in, a, in another. And 
that was easy enough to do. I, I really had no uh, troubles other than having to refresh the page, perhaps. Um, but the only thing I missed maybe was, and, and some people have made comments about this, is the number of steps that I would have to take to go from one room to another. But I can get that yeah. exercise some other time. So so yeah. I, I finally figured it out on Thursday. And at the beginning of each technical session, I would open a tab for yeah. every event that was happening. And then mm -hmm. I could just cycle through the tabs and jump into the meeting for the one that I was interested in at the moment. Yeah. Pro yeah. tips for day 13. <laughs> 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 if we count the free symposium it is it is day 13 yeah we definitely learned a lot about how this particular piece of software works and you know mm -hmm. a, a, as as our our friends our colleagues are all computing people in their own right we definitely heard about the the yeah. critiques of various things but um you know i learned i learned about selenium <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I learned about how, how we can do some UI testing to get through stuff. But, you know, yeah, there, there were some hiccups with refreshing pages. There were some hiccups with the agenda mm -hmm. seemingly disappearing on occasion. Yeah. But, you know, yeah. I, I, I I look back at, at the decisions that we made on the platforms we could have chose, and I still think we made the right decision here. Uh, there's, no matter what platform we chose, there was going to be something. I mean, it, mm -hmm. you know, when we're in person, there's always something like there's too many people <laughs> on the Wi-Fi, not enough chicken lunches have been ordered, you know, whatever. There's always something. Only one doesn't... escalator for <laughs> one escalator. <laughs> this <laughs> wide. Yeah. Not enough power cords. <laughs> not enough power cords. Yeah. But, you know, I, as you said at the, at the top of the show, Pam, the, the positive positivity we have seen, the engagement that we've seen in these sessions, I mean, you know, when when we were giving or Dan was giving Steve and Tracy their awards and to glance over and chat and just see these names just flying by. And when mm. we're in the room together and everyone's clapping, that's nice. But now it's like, I can, we, I can have the conversation with people while we're doing it. It's like, I, it's like I can elbow anyone in the room. I want to, to bother them like, Hey, isn't this cool? <laughs> and that was just neat to see. So, yeah. Well, speaking of the one last day and all the material we still have, Putting up the screen, the schedule for Saturday, March the 20th. So you are listening to the final episode, watching, listening, experiencing the final episode of Sig C Morning Coffee, um, at least for 2021. We have our closing keynote at one o'clock today with Dr. Valerie Taylor, who with uh, Juan Gilbert was on the, the docket for being with us in uh, in Portland. And we are so thrilled that she agreed to come back and to do the closing ceremony again. So looking so much forward to that. You've got one last chance today during the three o'clock uh, to eight o'clock time period to go see those exhibitors and supporters. Folks, these supporters and exhibitors, the, 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 not only the financial support, which is obviously very important, but also just the tool support, the expertise support is so important to the technical symposium. And we know it's different, but this is the last chance you're gonna get to go by and talk to them live. Yeah, their material is gonna be here and recorded like with everything else for a full year. So you'll be able to go back and watch their sessions. But if you wanna to talk to someone live, now is the time. Today is the day. Last chance. Make sure you're going by these, these booths, these exhibitors. I know Larry would love to see your shining face in the 2022 booth today. Or Maureen or Brian or whoever is there. Please make sure you're going by those, those booths and, and saying hi and saying how much we appreciate the support that they are giving us. Last day of posters at 4. And then gang, 8 and 9 o'clock. 8 o'clock p.m. Nifty assignments. You know, mm -hmm. this is... This is the, the session that always we have to find the biggest room we can for. Um, we're putting them in the prime time, Saturday, Saturday night, followed by the closing celebration. So um, what y'all looking forward to today? Nifty. Nifty. <laughs> closing. <The> celebration. <laughs> closing. <laughs> No, well, I mean, nifty is always awesome. I can't, I can't wait to see all the nifty assignments. Um, but you know, closing, closing is when we get to thank, yeah. or we get to recognize the SRC winners. That's super important. Uh, you mm -hmm. know, we want to, we want to thank all the committee members. We want God to see what that new logo is. Larry, you gonna, you gonna, you gonna spill then, the beans? You gonna tell us what it is right here? I promise, no, no one's watching. Go ahead, you can show us the logo. I don't, I don't even know yet. 
And I look forward to the video from the 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 site, right? The, uh, oh the yeah. City posting. Yes. If if you need an excuse to tune into the closing celebration, then the the uh, 2022 skit is it. Yeah. That yeah. It, it the 2022 skit is nice. It was, it was uh, the, the 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 writing was very good. It's yeah. pretty funny. And and I look forward to the handoff dinner, right? I mean, I got yeah. I can't got, wait. Uh, yeah. I'm ready to go. Oh. I mean, kind of, kind of bittersweet, giving it away, you know, handing off. But can we have a handoff dinner at on like Tuesday night before 2022? We hand off. It's like right. It's like it's like the oh. like a relay race. We're handing it to you right then. All right, go do the conference. <laughs> uh, yeah, we'll think about that. We'll think about that. So um, there are still openings for the 2022 committee. Okay, so. Make sure you go and respond to that survey. And Mark, are there still T-shirts available for twenty twenty one? more t Well, it's an it's an infant number of T-shirts, I suppose. But I am happy to report that we have reached the minimum, so the T-shirts will be made. So uh, I know there are some people that that will make them very happy. But sigc twenty twenty one dot org slash T-shirt, or you can find the link right on the home page of Pathable. There's a nice T-shirt logo. Click on that, and you'll get there from there. Um, I'm going to interject right here. We have a message from Judy about what she saw at the conference. She couldn't be with us for this recording right here, time zone excitement, um, but toss it to Judy. Hi, everyone. I hope you have enjoyed your first and our first online SIGC technical symposium. I trust you all found sessions, lots of sessions that you were interested in and were valuable to you. This has been a huge effort behind the scenes. I would like to thank my program co-chairs, Alvaro Monge and Pam Cutter. I've learned a lot from them and really appreciated their calm guidance as we worked our way through the many issues that we faced trying to get this conference ready. Also, I'd like to thank the conference co-chairs, Mark Sharif and Larry Merkel, who did an amazing job. I love the morning coffees that Mark produced, even though they were never at my morning coffee time. We've learned a lot that we will be taking forward to SIGC 2022. We now know how to put conferences on in person, online, and we can do blended if we have to. We will be looking forward to seeing you in Rhode Island in 2022. Uh so our final set of interviews today are with Manuel Perez Quinones and with Adrian Decker from the board, where they're going to talk about getting involved with the organization. They're going to talk about the business meetings that are next week. So typically, if in an in-person SIGC, we would have had the business meetings on Friday night, where you get to go and the board talks about things um, and updates on the financial health of the institution, all that sort of fun and exciting stuff. But they have two scheduled meetings. Um, you can find them on the schedule at the homepage, sigc.org. Sig you'll find the listing there. Also on the SIGC 2021 website, you'll find the links to get to the board meeting. So um, fair warning, Adrian was the first recording, uh, first interview recording we did, and it was kind of rough, um, but we didn't, it, it, it was still all appropriate. So not that she said anything inappropriate, but it was still all <laughs> fine. Boy, it's been the end of a long week. When we come back, our final set of earned interviews with Manuel and Adrian. Stay tuned. Welcome back. Joining us from Charlotte, North Carolina, is Manuel Perez Quinones, the Technical Symposium Board Liaison. Manuel, welcome to Sigsy Morning Coffee. How are you today? Hi, thank you. Thanks for inviting me. Glad you could be here with us. So we invited you here as the board liaison. So you've been uh, program co-chair, symposium co-chair. You've had a number of different roles. What is it now? You're, it sounds like a fancy title. You're the board liaison for the technical <laughs> symposium. What does that mean? What do you actually do? Uh, yeah. Um, so every of the four conferences we have at 60, we have an individual that is sort of the point of contact of communication with each conference. So I'm the board liaison for the technical symposium. What that means is that like every time we have a board meeting, our agenda is updates from the technical symposium and 
I get to put in there what all of you have asked me to, you know, ask the board or consult with the board and we discuss things. So I'm sort of the, the, the communication link between the program committee and the board. Um, and, and that's, that's sort of the role. It's, it's fancier title than, than the real role. So um, one of the things that is uh, similar about the four conferences is that they each have a board liaison, but there's a difference. Three of them have steering committees and one of these things is not like the others. Uh, can you talk about that a little bit? Yeah, absolutely. I think, I think we've, um, as the conferences grow, we sort of want to have more stable uh, points of view and history of the conferences and management. So the steering committee is a good way to involve two or three previous chairs and members of the board and people that have been involved with the conferences. So we have steering committees for all three of them other than the technical symposium, we we probably in the last six or seven months, we've realized ah, we need a steering committee. I think, I think last year, all the discussions at the last minute of do we close, do we open, uh, what do we do, do we reimburse? And that was handled by the PCs and the board. And but it was sort of very ad hoc. We realized it, it, it's time to put a steering committee for the for the technical symposium. So we'll probably create one in, you know. I don't know, in the next six months. So, so basically right after I got selected as a symposium co-chair, you decided you needed the steering committee. <laughs> uh, it, I, I wouldn't say that was the triggering event. Um. <laughs> uh, so seriously, since uh, most of my involvement has been with the uh, technical symposium as opposed to the other three conferences, I don't have... Uh, a really good feel for what kinds of things the steering committee gets involved in. Can you, can you go into that a little deeper? Yeah, absolutely. So, so um, I think it was last year or two years ago, we wrote a proposal. Well, actually when we grew the, the program committee chairs to three instead of two, and we switched the structure, that was a proposal that came out of conversation with the board but it came from us, from the personal, uh, from the group that we're chairing the, the symposium. That's the kind of thing that the other conferences comes out of the steering committee. You go to the steering committee and we say, we got to change the reviewing process because we would like to do X, Y, or C. The steering committee is the one that sort of discusses it, puts together a proposal. If it needs to go up to the board, it goes to the board, but more often than not, it will be the steering committee making the decision rather than just, this year's chair saying, oh, we're going to do it left-handed. And that sort of gives it a little bit more continuity and, and consistency. So, so changes on how uh, the symposium is run, changes of, you know, pre-symposium. I know the affiliated events are always sort of a challenge because they're very weirdly structured. All those things would be under the steering committee purview. And the steering committee typically is built out of people that have a lot of experience with the conference. So it'll be former chairs or people that have been in the community for a long time and things like that. Okay. Uh, so I know that there are uh, a number of specific changes that have been talked about for the technical symposium and some others that are uh, under consideration. Uh, what, what are some of those? So um, we were, we're trying very hard to differentiate 60 from the 60 conference. We, we forever have called the technical symposium the 60 conference. And now the 60 organization has four conferences. So, so we're putting a little bit more effort in calling it technical symposium. And in the process of that, uh, we've all realized that the acronym doesn't look right. We've also realized that computer science. I think the symposium is more than computer science, it's more computing. We have a larger group of uh, participants from Europe where it's more computing and informatics than computer science. We have high schools that are maybe doing a computer science class in the senior year, but doing computing from middle school up. So we're thinking, are all these things aligning into us changing the name? And people will hate this video for saying we're going to change the name. But uh, 
we we we're trying to think how do we what do, how do we differentiate the organization from the symposium uh, and in a way that sort of also is inclusive and it's more than just computer science education but more computing and and I don't have the answer we've come up with 10 15 alternative and they all look weird we'll probably end up with something yeah I we don't know so that I mean that is one big piece um, I think the pandemic is making us think what part of this online thing work? What parts of this online thing we want to keep? Uh, how do we do it hybrid where there is a group of people in place, you know, hopefully Rhode Island next year and a group that can somehow participate, saying participate loosely, remotely. We, we don't have a good answer. So that's one thing that, uh, not just for the technical symposium, but for all the conferences. We're, we're, I think the technology to do this online thing has developed enough that now it doesn't feel so strange. So we could probably envision that there might be some part of it that is still virtual. So not everybody has to be present. And that includes presenting. I mean, we, we're allowing presenting. Uh, last year, I think we said, if you're afraid of coming, we'll allow it. But before it used to be a no, no. I think we're. I think that's going to stay. So it's a matter of structuring in a way that that we don't bankrupt the conference. Yeah, um, and, then and the remote, remote presenting is is relatively easy, right? You uh, put a screen in the room and uh, set right. up the audio, and and you're pretty much good to go. Uh, remote viewing is a little bit more complicated, but that's one of the challenges that we're going to try to address. And, and, and the interaction, right? I mean, whether it's a q and A, I I mean, you could do Q&A in a boring way. You type it and somebody reads them. But, but the, the, I wish we would do something a little bit more interactive. But again, you can do that in some conferences that are smaller quite well. But when you're dealing with the symposium where... Right. That's uh, where, a key thing that we struggled with this year was how yeah. do we get, how do we, how can we incorporate that interactive piece where people can talk to each other right so yep yeah i mean that that would be interesting i mean when we we we've never we've never required people to say i want to go to that session we sort of do that by the size of the room we guess oh this is a popular one let's put it on the big room right and when it's full it's full and that's that but uh online if we have 50 people q a is one thing if you have a thousand that's a very different animal and and how do we adjust halfway or um, so it, it, yeah, it, there are a lot of interesting questions. I, I think, I think we'll, I think we're going to explore all of that. I don't know. Um, so the, the board is putting together a survey that will go to the 60 members um, that will ask questions about how do you envision our conferences all four uh, in a virtual hybrid format going forward to try to get a sense of what people are, are um, what their concerns, what they're willing to, you know, are they willing to pay to participate remotely? Uh, w w one thing that, that has happened that we've discussed a lot is what are universities allowing? Their universities are saying, no, we're not paying for remote conferences. Just, you know, ask somebody. And there are others one that are going all the way out and say, you have to file a travel authorization and this and the other, and you need the research funds and you, so, so we're, we're also trying to figure out uh, what our community, because if you consider we have community colleges, we have high schools, we have R1 with research fundings, we have uh, liberal arts colleges that might not have research funding. We get a, a very mix of participants. It's not simple to say, yeah, give us 50 bucks and we'll call it even. That, that might or might not work for all of them. So all of those questions are part of how do we sustain this online thing going forward so, so you mentioned that the board is going to be doing a survey uh, when should people look for that and how is it going to be distributed so i think the plan um as of a couple of weeks ago was that two weeks after the conference we're going to send an email with the survey we wanted to separate it a little bit from the conference so it would not be confused with the normal assessment of the conference survey uh, but we also want to do it close enough so that people, I mean, this is our largest conference, right? But we want people to remember 
this is what we did. This part lo- was fantastic. This one, don't do it again. We want them to have that experience fresh in their minds to provide feedback. So in about two weeks after the conference, we'll be sending out a survey. And that's to the 60 members mailing list? I believe so. And we might ask you guys to send it to the people that register for the symposium because there are some of them that are not sure. on the member list. So, Sure. Yep. sure. Yep. Thanks. So the technical symposium is just about over. Uh, if you know the excitement from the, the 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 atmosphere here, what other ways? What are ways that the people can stay involved with SIGSI and kind of keep in touch with each other or participate in things? So um, yeah, I mean, there's a lot of different ways. So uh, the easy one is volunteer to review papers for any of the four conferences. Um, Keep an eye on, on when, when we're putting together the committee for conferences. So the technical symposium, um, I don't know if the full committee is ready for the next one or not. Usually at this time of the year, we're still getting two or three more. Well, I'm glad you mentioned that, Manuel, <laughs> because uh, uh, if it hasn't already gone out, the 2022 committee will very soon be sending out uh, an email requesting volunteers to fill the open slots on the 2022 committee. Perfect. So that, that's a perfect way. I mean, the, the over the last few years, we've structured the committee for the symposium. The symposium is so big that it's it's a challenge to manage. So we structure, as you guys know, where almost all the big positions have a junior senior. So your first year you join in and you're sort of helping somebody that did it last year. And then the next year you train the next one. And that makes it a little bit less scary. Um we also have a lot of uh, um, volunteer positions, you know, s- session chairs and things like that, that are just the day of the conference or, or the week of the conference. Um, I, I, I strongly encourage people to, I mean, it, our listserv is amazing. Every now and then it just blows up and you're like, wow, look at all these interesting discussions and points of view. I would encourage people to participate in those conversation discussions and join in, even if even if it's something, you know, at my school, that doesn't work. I would love to hear opinions on how to make it work here. I mean, just just so that we have all those voices um, and then run for the board. We, we do elections every three years. Um, I believe that we're restricted in not being able to run for the same position again. So there's always opportunity for new people. We don't just move, you know, musical chairs and, and stay uh, so you you need new people. This is my first time on the board, and I had never run before. So, uh, so I mean, I, 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 all those ways are ways that that we want to get more people engaged and involved. And I, I, if you want to post questions on social media and ask us questions, we try to answer. But I mean, you know, I I, I really appreciate when people reach out directly and say, "Hey, have you thought of this?" Rather than just you know doing things on social media without ignoring that we're here. You can ask us. You don't have to throw the question out in the wind like that. <laughs> now, are there other committees? Um, so, you know, there's special projects, there's DEI. What are these things and how would people you know, become part of them? So the way the 60 bylaws are put together, all these special committees, are committees that come from the community or that we encourage the formation, but the community, the, the, the proposal for the committee has, committee has to come from the community. So DEI is one that last year, when the discussion on the listserv after the murder of George Floyd um, was sort of saying, how do we move forward? Um, we, we basically said, let's create a committee. Um, let's form a committee uh, from the community that would sort of look at what we need to do. And a few volunteers came forward and we had a session um, this at the conference. Um, they did a survey. Um, and I think the next step is for that committee to send a proposal to the board. Then we discuss it, approve it, and then it becomes a formal committee from the 6 organization. We have one on liberal arts. And we, had, we have several. I think we have three or four. Um, and they sort of work outside of the board because it's intended to be a community committee. Uh, but they're working, there's an official committee from the six-year organization. Um, so those committees, each one has its own bylaws. So in some of them, you can just say, 
let me work with you. And some you might have to, you know, do a more formal application. It depends on each one. So the diversity one is, I think, is very timely and very important for us because we want to, we, nobody has the answers on how to address equity and inclusion. I think it needs lots of voices and, and it makes a lot of sense to make it a very open committee and have lots of people providing input. So if somebody wants to do input or participate in these, would they be able to find information on these committees on the SIGSI website? Yeah, the SIGSI website has a page on all the committees that we have and the current leaders. And, and it ha- I think it has a little blurb on, on sort of uh, the purpose of the committee. Um, and, and some of them have produced reports and they're linked there. Some of them uh, are organizing their groups that are... Um, so we have a liberal arts that has been active for a long time and they meet at the conference. Um, we, I've, I've suggested the idea that maybe we need others like that for different types of institutions, maybe a community college, maybe a K-12, uh, maybe an HBCU uh, committee, because it, it, it's a good way to bring people that have very similar points of view or experiences and then have that experience be communicated to us or partner with us to do things, us meaning the board. So, yeah, we, I mean, they're listed on the website. Well, Manuel, it has been fantastic talking to you. Thank you so much for coming on the program. Thank you for joining us. It's been delightful to talk to you again. Thank you. It was a, it was a pleasure. I'm always happy to talk to you guys and I'm the liaison. So I talk to you guys all the time, but this was fun. (laughs) Thanks for your help with the conference. (laughs) Nice to see you face to face, if not in person. But uh, slightly Rhode more Island. personal than than on Slack, <laughs> R- Rhode Island face to face, Rhode Island, counting on it. Yeah. On it. Joining us now from Buffalo, New York, is Adrian Decker from the University of Buffalo and current SIGSI board chair. Adrian, how are you doing today? I am wonderful. So great to see you, Mark and Pam. Thank you for having me on the morning coffee. Yeah, you are one of the one of the last people I saw physically from Sigsy as we were hightailing it out of Portland. Uh, <laughs> it is wonderful to have you now joining us for Sigsy 2021 here virtually inside of Pathable. Um, and I always have wondered because I, I remember. Uh, when you, you, you've been on the board for several years now and became chair of the board just uh, within the last year, was it? The, the election was in 2019? 2019, yes. 2019. So, I mean, I, I'm familiar with the board from the perspective of you're who we go to when there's problems at the SIGC Technical Symposium and we need help. But uh, <laughs> what, what else does the board do? What, what is your role on the board as the chair and, and how does the board support the community? So um, the members of the board are all elected positions. We're all members of the SIGC community who have volunteered to serve on the board, which acts as a, a governing body for the SIG. Um, we, we work on all of the things that the members would like us to work on. Um, we oversee all of the events and activities of the SIG, um, which includes conferences like this one, um, as well as our special projects, um, awards, we have a speakers fund, we have um, support of various doctoral consortia that students can go to. Um, we have the, the travel grants that are available uh, for the symposium. They weren't available this year, but we'll, we're going to restart that program hopefully in the near future. Um, we also support a bunch of in cooperation conferences um, and sort of let them be part of the SIGSI community and make the SIGSI community aware of all of those things that are going on. And basically the board is in here in service of the membership and in service of the community, right? We're looking to figure out what the SIGSI community wants and needs in terms of what the different pieces are that will help make the community grow and prosper. Great. So you've mentioned some of the things the board does. Um, as far as like other conferences, um, what's the board thinking in terms of virtual or hybrid conferences or things moving forward? 
Yes, yeah, so this, this six C as an organization supports four conferences, the Technical Symposium, which is where we're at today, um, as well as the IDC conference, which takes place primarily in Europe, usually in the months of June or July. The ICER conference, which is the, the heavily, heavily focused research conference. That conference oscillates between North America, Australasia, Europe, and North America. Um, and that takes place typically in August or September. And then our newest conference that only has, has met one time, the ComBed conference, um, is a conference that is traveling around the world to places that I haven't mentioned. So the other places in the world that, that SIGC does not currently serve a conference. Now, as you're, everyone's probably aware, all of these conferences have not met in person since 2019. Um, they are all virtual. We, they were all virtual in 2020. They are all virtual in 2021. Since, oh, a few days before the symposium in 2020, the board has acted actively talked a lot about virtual conferences and hybrid conferences and, and going forward what conferences will look like and how to best support the Six C community through the conferences. The real issue for us and, and what the board is committed to trying to find out is what the community would like us to support. So um, shortly after the symposium, is over. So probably within two to three weeks of the end of the symposium, the board is going to be sending out a survey to all the SIGC membership, where we would like to get some feedback and some information from the membership about what types of virtual and hybrid conference support the membership is looking for. So that as we begin to plan into 2022 and beyond, we can start to think about what types of things we would need to support our membership in that endeavor. Yeah, I, I just, after working on planning um, 2020 conference, so doing a, doing an all in person one, and then switching gears, then doing the all virtual one, it's really astonishing just how different the the work set is and the skill sets needed for for managing a lot of this. I mean, you know, when we were looking at Portland, there was a lot of which macaroni and cheese are we going to have at the closing celebration lunch versus this time it's how many different ways can we set up pathable so that we can have birds of a feather and also posters. And it's, it's so much more of a technical um, uh, a, a set of skills. Whereas before it was a lot of, you know, kind of decision-making about how we were organizing as a community. Now it's gosh, Pam, how much time have we spent in these systems, you know, tweaking things. Tweaking and stuff. And in terms, in some, some aspects too, it affected, you know, the program, like we didn't, we weren't bound by space so much, you know, so we could include more things. We could, you know, what's making considerations as to what could actually be done in a virtual space and how much, you know, do we want to do was also you know, a big factor. So, I mean, that that's a question for, for the board. I mean, the other conferences uh, have a steering committee. Maybe the technical symposium will have one at, at one point. Otherwise, it's still the board. But, you know, we took the technical symposium and went from three and a half days to two full weeks. I mean, what sort of, what sort of things like could, could we be thinking about now that the board might be excited about like longer conferences or, or multiple conferences at a, at a time? I, well, I don't think we can support multiple conferences at one time, unless you mean something like a hybrid where there's a virtual and, an, and a physical component. Um, I think we're sort of spent it. We have our volunteers stretched thin enough just to support one conference, regardless of its, of its platform. Um, however, I mean, the board is interested in exploring possibilities. Um, we don't have an answer for what a virtual conference should really look like or what a hybrid conference should really look like and what would best support the needs of the community. We've put on the, the volunteers in Six C have done a tremendous job putting on these virtual events for us. It has been phenomenal. The work of the volunteers, the conference chairs, the program chairs, everybody who's been involved in making these events in 2020 and 2021 get off the ground have been phenomenal. We, they've also been working under a lot of duress and, and time constraints that there's, this is what had to be done. There wasn't much of an ability to plan even a year out. That's still not particularly for the technical symposium as people who've been involved in the technical symposium know it's not just a year out planning process. It's actually much longer. So turning this particular conference on a dime, which is effectively what we did in, in the, you know, when we announced in August that this was going to go virtual, that's actually sort of the shortest amount of time we could possibly have given ourselves to try to move this to be a virtual mm -hmm. event. Um, so thinking about things longer term, what the board would like to see is, is thinking with the steering committees and with the conference committees about what 
should this look like long term and how do we sort of build in these types of perhaps virtual, perhaps hybrid components um, in a way that that helps contribute to and supports the community the way they want to be supported. And so that's why to us, this, this survey that will be coming is, is critically important for us to understand when people are saying they would like a hybrid event or they would like a virtual event to be able to tell us more information about to them, what do they think that looks like? and what do they want us to try to support? And then we can begin working with our steering committees and our conference committees to figure out how to make those things possible. So Adrian, if, if our colleagues are interested or wanna lend their expertise in some of these areas, how can they get involved in conference committee work or be part of the board? What do they have to do? So um, Sixty is always looking for volunteers all across the organization, conferences, committees, various other things. So one of the th ways, the easiest ways that you can volunteer for any of these things is to re reach out to any of the board members. Um, and you also can reach out to pretty much anybody on a conference committee. They can sort of get you into the places where the people who are going to be needing volunteers can, can slot you in, right? Every conference, there's another one coming up and there's another committee that needs to be formed and there's positions that need to be filled. Um, every so often the board will post things about in things that are not related to the conferences, but other positions that um, the board fills on a volunteer basis. We post those to the 60 members listserv and our 60 volunteers listserv. And that's another place where you can go to find other announcements about conference committee openings and various other things that are going on. All of our conference committees post to both members and our volunteers listserv. Um, in terms of the board, the board is elected every three years. Um, we will be having a call for nominations coming out. Um, the new board will be seated in 2022. Um, so election information will actually start coming out in September, or October of this year um, for the new board to be seated. So if that is something you're interested, please watch the listserv and the announcements and things like that to sort of know when that is coming up. Um, the other thing that we encourage people to do to get involved and to sort of make themselves known if they are interested in being involved is that you can stop by the SIGC business meeting. Each year the organization has a meeting that talks about the general state of the, the SIG, the organization, um, and answers questions of the membership. That meeting is going to be held on March 20, two, two meetings actually, to sort of accommodate multiple time zones if possible, March 23rd and March 24th. Um, and information about the exact timing, I can say them in Eastern, but you might want them converted into your own time zone. If you go to sigc2021.sigc.org slash schedule, it's listed on the technical symposium schedule page, even though it's well after the technical symposium is done. Um, and the link to that is also going to be available in the comments on the video. Perfect. Great. Well, That's good information. Yeah. Thank you so much. I mean, um, you know, being a volunteer for the SIGSI organization has been very fulfilling for me as, as, as someone who, who got involved um, a few years ago. And um, even, you know, there, there is work involved and it's, it's, it's good work. And, you know, it, 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 it's very fulfilling for, for being a part of the community. And I, I certainly recommend anyone who's interested do so. It is great. I've been on a number of different committees or as part of the, uh, the conferences and it's been a great way to meet other people and just see how things actually work. Um, and I think the important piece of this is, is SIG C is about the community. It's about the people. So we just talked about volunteering. You both talked about how great it's been that experience. This experience online is, is also another piece of how do we build this community and how do we keep everybody together and how do we make those connections that make SIG C truly a special place to be part of. So thank you for all of your work this year, last year and continuing on. <laughs> and thanks for your support. And thank you very much for joining us. And we're back. And it's time to wrap things up. Time to roll credits on Sig C Morning Coffee, roll credits on the conference. Um, well, tonight, after the closing ceremonies, of course, please make sure you're there. But there are definitely a lot of folks that we need to thank. Larry? Well, for those people on the committee, uh, you know that we have a lot of support from uh, the DL plan folks, Dorothea Heck and, and her company. We could not put on such a great symposium without their help. Uh, and if you if you see them in 2022, please stop them and thank them for all of the work that they did to make this possible. They, they did lots of the research on virtual platforms and uh, mm -hmm. on top of everything they always do. So thank you, Dorothea and crowd. Uh, 
Jill Schiffelbein of the Dynamic Communicator Incorporated handled all of our production. And that was an enormous task, uh, both in preparation for the symposium and making things run smoothly while it was happening. Just mm -hmm. amazing work. And she coordinated really well with Jason Pasella from uh, Pathable. And the Pathable support was fantastic. Yeah, there were, there were some hiccups, but the point is they addressed all of them in very short order. And we just can't say thank you enough for everything that you all did for us. Pam? I want to take a minute to thank our entire committee, the program committee, the organizing committee. You know, without all of the help from all of you, there's no way we could have pulled this off. You know, your your time, your suggestions, your energy, your helpfulness are just, you know, we are extremely thankful for all that you've done for us and helped us along the way. Alvaro? And I want to recognize the session chairs, all the volunteers that, you know, stood up and when we called for um, anybody who wanted to do session chairs under new conditions, <laughs> some of us still were trying to figure out exactly what they, how they would be doing um, their responsibilities. But um, you know, the sessions that I were, that I was at, session chairs were doing a great job of keeping track of the questions, um, keeping track of track of time. Um, and making sure that the session was running smoothly. So some of the session chairs were also track chairs uh, that we had in there. So in, um, while well, Pam mentioned it already, I also want to recognize those volunteers who went through the video submissions from the authors and made sure that they were the appropriate format. I mean, mm -hmm. this was new. This was mm -hmm. so new and, and we needed somebody. We knew we were going to get a lot of videos and those had to be reviewed by somebody. And um, and they did an outstanding job with that. So thank you to all of those volunteers. Yeah, Bogdan and Brian with the virtual arrangement chairs. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, I've said it once, I've said it a, a bunch of times, but we, we would not be here without our supporters. I mean, you know, coming out of uh, 2020 and everything that happened as far as trying to close that down very quickly, uh, a lot of our supporters were very understanding and they said that you know this is part of what we are we want to be a part of sig c we want to we want to see this thrive and they stuck with us through that and they came to 2021 despite not necessarily knowing what sort of engagement we would have here and um you know we can't thank them enough so our, our platinum sponsors google github education and microsoft gold uh Codio and nsf silver AWS Educate, CodeGrade, GradeScope, IBM, Replete, and Zybooks, and our bronze, AdaCore, the Anita Borg Institute, Intel, Oracle for Research, Pearson, Turingscraft, and Twilio Quest. Thank you so much for your faith in us and for investing in this community. And we hope that um, you got as much out of being here as we got from you being here, both uh, from our from the 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 tools that you brought, the excitement that you brought, the the platforms that you were talking about. So thank you, thank you, thank you. Oh well, <laughs> do we all go take a nap? That sounds good. It's morning coffee, but I could use a morning nap. So so we're geared up and ready to go oh. for the for the for the for the keynote and for the and for Nifty. What is this? No, Larry, you don't want a nap? <laughs> no naps for you. Not till tomorrow. <laughs> That's probably true. I go. probably need to go check the support queue to see if there's anything going on there. So <laughs> on behalf of myself and Pam and Alvaro and Larry and Judy, thank you so much for being with us all week. 60 morning coffee. Take care. We'll see you in Providence. Bye. 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 I had to sneak this part in the end so that my co-chairs wouldn't see it. I just wanted to publicly thank Judy Sheard, Pam Cutter, Alvaro Monhi, and Larry Merkel for everything they've done over this past year. The amount of work that they have put in to make this symposium happen is just astonishing. And I could not be more honored to have gone through this experience with them. They have been the consummate professionals and also entirely silly whenever I ask them to. <laughs> so 
uh, for, for coming on me with this journey, for creating the first fully online technical symposium, even if that meant I drug you into doing an online morning interview show. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And now, as we roll credits on the 2021 Technical Symposium, a big thanks to all the members of the program and organizing committees who put in so much work to make this time happen. Also, a big thanks to everyone at DL Plan and Jill Schiffelbein, our head of production, for all the work that had to go in behind the scenes for getting the supporters here, for making sure that every session had the technical help that it needed, and for making sure that everything happened. Thanks for joining us all week for Sigsy Morning Coffee. I look forward to seeing you tonight at the closing celebration. Take care. Be well. See you in Providence.